Having been a Bears fan all these many years, there are certain things that I'm conditioned to see. Typically a lot of bad football, but some really good play at the running back position and some outstanding play at the linebacker position. And when it comes to linebacker position every year for the NFL Draft, I always love evaluating linebacker prospects, and in particular middle linebackers, and who could blame me. I grew up on Mike Singletary. And then it became, you know, a player that a lot of people forget about. He was a good, solid middle linebacker for several years. That was Barry Minter. And then this guy from New Mexico came in the ninth pick of the 2000 NFL draft, Brian Urlacher. And he became the franchise player for a decade. And then Lance Briggs was playing alongside of him. And I just love the linebacking position. It breaks my heart to see the running back position become as devalued as it has been in terms of the NFL draft and in the league as a whole. And in some ways it frustrates me. When I hear talk about the linebacker position, in particular the middle linebacker position being devalued, because I just frankly don't get it. You know, to me, linebackers are still incredibly important, especially in today's NFL game. You know, maybe you say there's not as much of a premium on those great run stuffing inside linebackers. That's true. But how much better off is your defense if you've got a middle linebacker that can be the captain of your defense, the quarterback of your defense, that can play on all three downs, that can do everything, that can stuff the run, that can... Uh, rush the passer, that can play man in zone coverage. I mean, how much better off are the Seattle Seahawks on defense for, yes, they've got Sherman and Chancellor and Earl Thomas, and then they've got guys like Michael Bennett up front, Cliff Averill. How much better off is that defense because they've got Bobby Wagner in the middle? That's a clearly different defense when Bobby Wagner is out of the lineup compared to when he's in the lineup. And you look at the Carolina Panthers, you know, that defense – was led by Luke Keekley and Thomas Davis, those two linebackers. I mean, if they didn't have one of those guys, imagine how much of a step back the defense would take. Imagine if they didn't have either one of those guys. You'd be talking about a pedestrian middle-of-the-road defense, and that's exactly the truth. So and this whole notion that the inside linebacker position just isn't that important, I strongly dispute. You look at the 49ers for years. Patrick Willis was the heart and soul of that team. He was the face of that franchise, for lack of a better term. Uh, it just really frustrated me. And, yes, I know – it's great to talk about the edge rushers like DeMarcus Ware and Von Miller for the Broncos that were instrumental in helping them win Super Bowl 50. Those guys are important too. And I think those inside linebackers get lost in the shuffle. They still have importance. And frankly, I think part of the devaluation of that position is, again, that a lot of the people involved with the NFL in those decision-making positions aren't very good at their jobs. Just because they have the job doesn't mean they deserve the job. Just because they have the job doesn't mean they're any fucking good at it. And that's just the truth of the matter. So anyways, off of my soapbox now, it's time to talk about an old school type of inside linebacker, an old school type of middle linebacker in this year's draft class, and that's Reggie Raglan, the six foot one, 247 pound senior from the Alabama Crimson Tide, a part of the 2015 National Championship team. This was a guy that was getting attention throughout the course of the college football season. As the season went along, he started to get more focus and more attention being a part of that great front seven that Nick Saban had and Kirby Smart had with the Crimson Tide. And now he went from being thought of as maybe an early second-round pick to a late first-round pick to now people are starting to talk about him being a top 20, top 15. I've seen some people even view him maybe as a top 10 pick. And I'm like, Wow. So I couldn't wait to actually sit down and evaluate Reggie Raglan. I had only watched bits and pieces of him. So now I knew that when it came time to sit down and really dive into the film and really look at him and watch him, that that would let me know what to really think about him. So here's what I do think about him. In terms of the strengths of his game, good size, nice strength. Six foot one, so he's not huge and long, but 247, basically 250 pounds. This is a big dude, and this is a big dude in the middle of your defense, and he plays like a big dude, very strong, plays with nice physicality. I really like that about his game, but he's got more to him than just that. A lot of people will view him as just a purebred, two-down, run-stuffing middle linebacker, inside linebacker, and I don't know if he's that. I think that's underselling him, and I think that's not speaking to his full potential in the full game that he has. This is a guy that you can line up outside as an edge rusher at times. I really like the way that Alabama utilized him in their system. They lined him up all over the place at linebacker. They put him in the middle. They put him on either end. You know, they would send him up the middle with blitzes. They'd have him rush from the outside. They did a lot of things with him, and I think that actually helped his preparedness for the NFL level. It helped his draft stock, I think, a little bit because – you're talking about a guy that could potentially play three downs at the NFL level because his ability uh, to get some heat on the quarterback. You know, is he ever going to be an explosive 10-plus sack edge rusher guy? No. 
But he's a guy that when you pick and choose your spots with him as a blitzer, he can get to the quarterback a few times, maybe five, six times a year. And that really helps, you know. So he's more well-rounded, I think, than people give him credit for. A uh, really solid fundamental tackler. He's not an explosive, I don't think, dominant, like knock you off your ass type of tackler, but solid. Solid is a wrap-up guy, doesn't have a lot of arm tackles, doesn't have a lot of people run through his arm tackles. You know, like I said, good solid form, good solid technique, the type of guy that gets his arms on and hands on somebody and tends to hold on to them and tends to stop them where they're at. Uh, I think he has underrated straight line closing burst and closing speed. You know, now, I'm not talking about laterally from sideline to sideline. I'm not necessarily talking about turning in his hips and running backwards. Uh, but when you're talking about he could sit there and pick and choose and make a decision, he plays relatively decisively, I think. Once he makes that decision to go, he can get there pretty quickly. His straight line closing burst, I think, is something that is a little underrated in terms of his game and something that, you know, doesn't get the credit that it deserves. I think he's got a good, solid mind for the game based off of what I saw off of film the last two years. You know, I wouldn't say that I think his instincts are otherworldly, but I think it's solid. I think he does a good job in play recognition every once in a while. Maybe he's not great, but that's going to happen. You know, nobody's going to be perfect every single time. There are going to be mistakes made. And again, sometimes I think we focus on the negatives a little too much, and we don't focus on what these guys bring positively to the table and what they do positively the majority of the time. And the majority of the time, I think Reggie Raglan puts himself in good positions. He knows where he is on the football field. He knows what his responsibilities are, and he knows where the ball is and where it's going to go. And I like that out of a middle linebacker. I like a guy with at least decent instincts and decent awareness because it's great if they can fly all over the field and do all these different things. But they don't, if they don't have a nose for the football, if they don't have a feel for the game, I think they're really limited as a player, and I'm just being honest. Now, in terms of the areas I have concerns about Raglan, I look at his quickness and his lateral speed. This is not a super-duper athlete. You know, he ran like 4.72 at the Combine. And when you look at the tape, that about meshes. You know, I thought he would run somewhere in the 4.7s, maybe low 4.8s. I'm like, this is not a burner. He's not a sloth in the middle, but he's not a guy that is going to make athletic plays all over the field. So some teams are going to have concerns about whether he could be a sideline to sideline type of three down inside linebacker, middle linebacker. And those are legitimate concerns. And something you would also see on film, because of that lack of quickness, I think, and speed, it places an increased importance in pursuit on getting the right angles and sometimes running backs and wide receivers would be able to beat him to the point and they would break up his angle and sometimes Raglan didn't take the best angles to him. I don't think he always judged his speed or lack of speed compared to the other guy's speed very well. That could come a little bit in terms of the natural field, but I think again it's a reflection of that lack of overall big time athleticism, that lack of true explosive sideline to sideline burst and lateral speed which makes you really concerned about whether or not he could stick as a middle linebacker in a 4-3 defense and how he would be utilized inside even in a 3-4 because he's going to be kind of a phone booth guy, you would think, a guy that's going to have to play in a smaller space to get the most out of him. Uh, and at times, talking about a guy in space, I have questions about his uh, gap discipline and his ability to shed blocks. And it's not saying that he did a terrible job of it at Alabama. But when you look at that front three that he would play behind, with Jerron Reed and Jonathan Allen and, yes, even A. Sean Robinson. You watch the film on Raglan a lot, especially in 2015. You saw a guy a lot of times never got touched. A lot of times when a blocker got to him, Raglan's already gotten several yards of steam ahead of him. You know, so did he really have to worry about maintaining gap discipline all that much when these guys were taking up so many blockers in front of him? You know, and he was able to play very clean consistently in 2015 at Alabama because, again, he didn't get a lot of contact from blockers. He would get more contact when he would go outside as a pass rusher or he would try to sit there and follow in pursuit than when he would actually be playing straight inside of the box. And, you know, I think that's a concern. Is, is he a bit of a product, frankly, of that Alabama system? Is he a product of the talent that he played around? Did they mask some of those deficiencies? Did that help his production because you had Reed and Allen and Robinson commanding so much attention and taking so much of the blocking up in front of him that it freed Raglan up to do things all over the place in the middle of the field? I think that's a legitimate concern. I really do. And then I look at his ability to play in the man or zone uh, pass coverage. You know, zone, I thought he was okay. I didn't think he had tremendous instincts or feel for playing in the zone. But when you talk about playing man-to-man, -man, especially at the NFL level, I guess tight ends and some of the athletes that play there and at running backs and, you know, 
I just really have some serious concerns about whether or not this guy could hold up in coverage consistently at the NFL level. I think he would get better at the NFL level as a zone defender, and I might like to have him on the field as a zone defender as long as you keep his responsibility limited. But in terms of man-to-man -man coverage, if you're getting Reggie Raglan out there in the flat and over the middle in a man-to-man -man situation, you know, if you're the offense, you feel pretty good about your chances, and that's the truth of the matter. It's not to say that he can't get better with his quickness and lateral speed, but sometimes some guys just have it and sometimes they just don't. And while his instincts and awareness are good, I don't think they're phenomenal enough to cover uh, – as well for some of those deficiencies in terms of his overall athleticism. In terms of an NFL comparison, at first I was thinking like Ray Malaluga, and I was like, eh, I don't want to do that to him. I wanted to see more of somebody who I thought was a similar positional fit. And I went with David Harris of the New York Jets. When he came out of Michigan, second round pick, I think it was in 2007, you know, there were thoughts of him, good size, good strength, very, very good against the run. Reggie Ragland is very good against the run. Solid movement skills when he's going straight ahead. And he really struggles sideline to sideline, uh, questionable coverage skills, you know, lack of hip flexibility and great initial quickness, lateral speed. Makes you wonder if he's a two-down player. However, similar to David Harris, I think Reggie Ragland gets some increased value because of his abilities as a blitzer, as somebody that can rush up the middle. He has good timing and anticipation there and good discipline in terms of being a pass rusher and not always giving it away. He can disguise it pretty well. And then as an edge rusher as well, I actually think he has more value as a pass rusher than David Harris did coming out of Michigan. When you look at Reggie Ragland, this is a big-name player from a big-name program, and I think he got some of his just desserts as just do because he was a really solid football player for the Crimson Tide in 2015, part of a national championship team, part of that great Alabama defense, in particular that great, fantastic, phenomenal Alabama front seven just loaded with future NFL players. Um, when you look at him, he's got a good physical package in terms of his size and his strength. Like I said, about six foot one, 250 pounds, a solid tackler. You know, does a lot of good fundamental things. Not a lot of wild things that really jump off the charts on you or make you say, holy shit, I got a shubber in my short pants region. But again, a, a guy that does a lot of things in a decent fashion. Well, a good, solid, fundamental player. I like the fact that he offers some versatility as a pass rusher. I think that's going to be a big plus to him as he transitions to the NFL level. I think he's better in terms of straight line pursuit and straight line burst and closing speed than he's maybe given credit for. And that helps in part with his recognition skills. Although, I, like I said, I think they're good or pretty good. I don't think they're great or exceptional. I question severely whether or not he could be a true sideline to sideline player because let's face it, if you watch the film, he struggled at that at Alabama consistently in 2015. This was a guy that running backs and wide receivers and tight ends would would break up his angle. They would run past him. You know, he just I don't think if you're looking for him to be a sideline to sideline guy that you're putting him in the best situation to succeed. And when I see guys like Reggie Raglan, I see guys that can be solid NFL players. I want them to be in the systems that make sense. I want them to be put in the best possible situations to succeed. And I think if you're trying to put him in a 4-3 as a middle linebacker and you're asking him specifically to go sideline to sideline and you're asking him to go line of scrimmage to end zone, you know, that could potentially lead to him being a bust at the NFL level, and I really mean that. Uh, just not fluid or natural enough in coverage for me to think of him as a really, really high marquee level talent. Um, and I, like I said, I do question whether his system that he played in the talent that he was surrounded by and played behind had something to do with the production that he did have. I truly think his best fit is as a, a strong interior 3-4 inside linebacker. Like, for example, if he played next to a really good athlete in the middle in a 3-4, like let's say Baltimore, for example. If he was playing uh, next to C.J. Mosley, who's a solid athlete, you know, Raglan fits there. If Raglan was in Pittsburgh, let's say, and he was playing next to a Shazier, that, again, would make quite a bit of sense to me. you got one guy that can cover up some of those deficiencies in one aspect, and Raglan can cover up some deficiencies in the other area. You know, if you get the right contrast next to him inside in the 3-4, you know, I think he's going to be a very successful player and a nice long-term starter at the NFL level. And I think personally, when everybody talks about whether or not he could be a three-down player, they always focus on pass coverage, pass coverage, and whether he can hold up in zone coverage, whether he can be a man-to-man -man defender in the passing game, and say that, I don't see that he's really going to be able to do that consistently, therefore he's not a three-down player. 
And I say bullshit to that. I think as he works at it and gets better at it and gets coached up to it, he'll be better as a zone defender at the NFL level. And with that ability as a blitzer and as a pass rusher, I do think in particular in a 3-4 that he can be a three-down linebacker inside at the NFL level. I do. And I think those people that sell him short just saying he's a two-down linebacker are mistaken. Now look, I don't think he's a star in the making. I think he's a solid football player. That could be a nice pick for somebody for the next next player, nice player for the next seven, eight, nine years. You know, I've seen mocks that have him going in like the top ten. If Reggie Raglan goes in the top ten of this draft, you know, if it's Reggie Raglan or other people in the draft, it's just the reality of the situation. That indicates that this is not a very good, very strong draft at all. And or people making the decisions and calling the shots for some of these teams picked very high, in particular in the top ten, are not very good at their job, and frankly. Because a lot of these teams are picking in the top ten, it is an indication that the people running the show are not very good at their job. Uh, you know, Raglan could go in the top 20. And if he goes in the top 20 and it's a good situation and it fits for him and it makes sense for him, you know, I'm not going to knock it too much. Because to me, when I look at this draft, as I said before, I see maybe 16, 17, 18 guys at the very, very most that have a true first-round grade to me. This is a draft where I would love to have a ton of picks on day two. Because there are a lot of quality players with second and third round grades on them. And that's the truth. And that's just the reality of the situation. To me, when I look at Raglan, he's a guy that carries a high second round grade to me. In this draft, he's probably a top 30 to 40 player. I think there's a chance because of the concerns about him being a two down thumper inside and teams not being able to see that he could improve and get better in zone coverage and he could be more valuable to them as a blitzer and an edge rusher as they want to give him credit for because they are stupid and they don't understand how to properly utilize talents like Reggie Raglan. You know, there's a chance he could slip to the early portion of round two, especially with the devaluing of the position. I think personally he should go somewhere between in terms of this draft, even though, like I said, he's a 30 to 40 player to me, you know, somewhere between 20 and 40. If he goes anywhere in there or just above pick 20, I understand, especially with linebackers like Miles Jack and uh, Darren Lee probably going above him, Jalen Smith and the questions about his injury and what's going to happen there. You know, Raglan probably is going to be the third, you know, true linebacker, not talking about edge rusher, but true linebacker that's taken in this draft. And that's a good place for him to be. I think he's helped himself some in the offseason process with the senior role in the combine. I think he's helped himself more than he hurt himself. I just think that if you're looking to Reggie Raglan to be a true difference maker and a true star, you're probably reaching and hoping a little too much. But he should still be a good, solid player for the next six, seven, eight years in the NFL, I believe.